Christina Ponter. I am joined now by the WBO Welterweight World Champion, representing Darby Sandy Ryan, and the challenger this week, former Unified World Champion, Michaela Mayer. I can feel the tension already up here. This is the first time both ladies have sat on the stage, have been this close to each other since the fight was announced. And Champ, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, we saw a picture this week of you and Michaela back from the amateur uh, days. Things used to be a little bit more cordial between the two of you. Your thoughts on kind of your past relationship prior to the fight being announced with Michaela? Is that how you do it, Avery? You start with the champ. I thought they start with the competitor first. I want to give you the first. Be the champ to last. We'll go back and forth. Okay. Okay. What were your questions, sir? <laughs> That's okay. I just thought your initial thoughts on Michaela, as I saw a picture of you guys this week um, that she put out, and you guys were quite friendly with each other before in the amateur days. Even had some talk over social media before things became official between you guys to fight. Yeah, we've known each other since amateur days. I was on Great Brent team. She's on the USA team and. We used to do training camps and spa. Yeah, so I've always respected her as a fighter. Um, and I've always I've always um, spoke that. But um, yeah, I don't respect her as a, as a person. Now, how she's been leading up to this fight, once it got made, so yeah. Gave the champ the first word coming into this fight as the challenger. And things, like she said, used to be friendly between the two of you. You weren't really on her weight radar considering she was fighting up at welterweight for a while. You were coming up from 30 and then 35. Some of the things got real, real quick between the two of you, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, we do know each other from the amateur days. She said she respected me. Then you would think some type of, hey, Michaela, guess what? I'm coming to train in America at your gym with coach, with your coaches and your team. Like, I'm pretty excited. You coach. None of that yeah. happened. So obviously, in my mind, she knew she was doing something a little bit shady. She knew she knew there was going to be some problems with that, and she knew I was at welterweight. It was no secret that I was at welterweight. I was slowly moving up over the year. Fought at forty-two. Fought Tasha Jonas at forty-seven. But Sandy was she wasn't on your radar at the time when you came to the United States. Where you've gone and said you've been fighting at welterweight when you came. It's, this is not just your first or second camp training in Las exactly. Vegas. Yeah. Uh, the first time I came over to America um, was for the Jessica McCaskill fight and Michaela was not at 147 then, so what she's just said there, I bet you all decide on your opinion, but there you go. I come over, why did I, I never come over here for, to trouble Michaela? I, mean, I come over here to better my own career. You see a lot of a lot of fighters, top end fighters, UK fighters come over to America because the training is great here, the sparring is great, the training is great, like you see fighters doing that to better their career and that's exactly what I did. But you knew that you were coming to my gym and you knew that it was kind of a step in, on my toes. Yeah, but you wasn't at 147 when I came over, so I was literally I away know. fighting Natasha Jonas at 147. Wait, the first time I came over. Not the first time you came over, the second time. When you moved there, when you came over to fight. Yeah, I came when in. you officially came, came there. Today. You knew, okay, <laughs> one second. Oh. Here she goes, we're going to yap in. Gonna pull some Message tea. from Sandy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Secondly, sorry I didn't reach out before, but I should have spoke to you out of respect. Firstly, after asking to train me, as in reality, I'm coming into your territory. So don't try and backtrack now. Just be straight up. You did what you had to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just own it. Okay. Just own it. Because Kate, own it. Because Kate and Flick, they are their brothers. They're a team. Yes, that's what I've been saying. Has Flick ever been in your corner? Has Flick ever been in your corner? No, it's not Have you about ever paid Flick. The guy? You're not here for Flick. You didn't come all the way from the UK for T-shirt boy Flick. Flick's never fucking coached a day in his life. He's never even put on the gloves. You came for K. Hey, what did we do in my last fight? We Flick in my corner. And Coach oh. Day in your corner. We all saw it. He wasn't it. in my corner. He was in the, he, was in the, he wasn't even on the camera. He was warming you up in the freaking dressing room. We all saw this. Just own it. Thank you. Tell him Next question. 
<laughs> when Michaela did come on your radar, you're the champion. You kind of have your choice as to who you want to fight unless it's a mandatory type situation. I know the first time this fight came around, maybe wasn't of interest to you. What made this like, okay, yeah, let's do this now. Let's come to New York City. I'll fight Michaela. What changed your mind? Because the, the, the offer was better and you know me, I've, I've, I've said yes to every fight in my career so um, and I've been over here once before and I'm doing it again so I'm, I'm not shy to it um, and I'm up for challenges and um, I'm ready to go, yeah. And for you Michaela, I know you kind of circled there then thought maybe you would be able to run back the Natasha Jonas rematch and then Chantel Cameron's name came around. When you got the call back that it was going to be the fight, she accepted the terms that she said she hasn't ducked anybody in her career. I'm sure you, that you were more than excited for the opportunity not only to fight back here in the States, but to actually get to challenge for a world title again. Yeah, I held off for a while, hoping for that rematch with Jonas. Um, she was on board for it, but Boxer couldn't secure that date. So um, I, I tried holding out, didn't work. Um, so obviously I called my manager and I said, all right, let's go after the champs, send Sandy an offer. And they turned down the first offer, no, no, no counter offer, no nothing. So I just, I honestly didn't expect for this to happen. But, um, you know, thanks to top rank, they pulled everything together and did what they do best and got this fight made, so. And exactly the fight that I wanted, the fight that I wanted and the fight that I made, because this fight would not be happening if I would have just stayed under the same banner, we all trained in the same gym, oh, you're with Flagger, I'm with Kay, even though they're all a team, we're all doing things together. I knew that wasn't gonna work. And I knew that this was the fight that I wanted to make happen, and I had to leave in order to make this fight happen. So ultimately, I got what I wanted. It's all, it all worked out for the best. And what you wanted was a new voice in the corner, Inter, Kofi, Chantua. How much of an influence has he been on you in just a short amount of time? You know, you work with champions, especially at this point in the career. And they're going to make huge differences, at least that's what a lot of people say in one fight camp, but really you do feel like he's improved you and you've learned new things even at this point that you didn't have before. Yeah, this was all really a blessing in disguise. Like, I, I should thank Sandy, honestly, because I had to reroute everything, um, and I feel like I'm in a better position for it. I have Kofi Gentoo in my corner, who I'm extremely happy with. And I, you say you can't learn so much at this stage in your career, but that's not true for me. You know, I always feel like I'm growing and getting better. Um, and we put in some good months together, so I'm excited to go out there and, and you know, just show that, but also show that like, I'm still coming off one of the best fights of my career against Tasha Jonas. Like I'm not going anywhere. I'm still, I'm, in, I'm literally in my prime and getting prime and getting better and better every day. So that's why I want to go out there and show on Friday night and just, I want you to see the best version of Michaela Mayer you've ever seen. And for you, Champ, I mean, getting better and better is all you've been able to do under the tutelage of Flick and training out here in Las Vegas. You talked about the heat, you talked about the sparring, you talked about leveling up, becoming a world champion, and adding his voice to your corner, getting that stoppage in that last fight against Ray Harper was quite impressive. How much do you feel like he's made you better and you've been able to level up since having that voice in your corner and being in Las Vegas and kind of getting out of your comfort zone alone, away from family, away from friends, making that ultimate sacrifice? Yeah, exactly that. Um, I feel great. Me and Flick, we gel, we click. You can see, you'll see it on camera. Um, and I'm really happy we've had a great camp. I feel great. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I'm still. And just for to make everything clear, Kay Karoma is or is not working your corner on fight night? No, he's not in my corner. Okay, so we, we have that part uh, settled. Came down to it, where is he? Exactly, you should feel stupid. I don't know, give him a call. I don't know where he is. <laughs> That's that. That's that, you moved all the way out here, now you don't even know where he is. My trainer's right there, my G! <laughs> <laughs> Sandy, at this point in your career against Michaela Mayer, obviously not the result you wanted last time you were here in the United States in a fight that a lot of people watching really, really know what happened. You have an opportunity to kind of right that wrong here in the States. And a, a card, similar cards have been dealt to her in her last couple of fights over in the UK. Um, and, and you were parents and you thought that she won uh, the last fight against Natasha Jonas. So with your opportunity here, what needs to happen skill-wise? I mean, we know the drama and everything like that. But all the drama, everything trainers said, you're two badass women. You're two great fighters. And technically speaking, you know, you expect this to be a really come forward, exciting fight between two skilled fighters. Exactly that. Cut all the BS talk. It's 
two great women fighters up here fighting, headlining at Madison Square Garden, and it don't get much bigger, bigger than that for women's boxing, you know? So I'm excited to come and perform for you all and get a decision this time in America, and I'll make sure of that, because I know what I've got to do. Yeah, you said that you have to kind of fight with the aggression and, and make it very clear from the opening bell so that there's no doubt in any of the judges' minds uh, that, that you should walk out of here still the champion. From, from really pillar to post for as long as it lasts. Yeah, of course, look, I'm confident in, um, in whatever way or however way the fight goes. Whether she wants to fight, whether she wants to box. I believe I'm better in, uh, in both departments, so we'll see you fight night. And for you, Michaela, I mean, stylistically-wise, similar height, similar reach. This is your second fight officially at 47. You fought Jones at 47. You made your way up from 35. You did have a fight at a catch weight at 142. So it's been a gradual move uh, for you. It's not like you're coming in here being shocked at the first time against a true 47-pounder. Um, Skills-wise, what should the fans expect to see between the two of you? Because I know, at the end of the day, you still respect your ability as a fighter in the ring and what she brings her amateur pedigree, etc. Yeah, I don't chase down fighters that I think suck. You know, that's never been me. I've always been the type of fighter that goes out for the best, challenges myself, and wants to put on the, the fights that fans want to see. So I obviously respect her in that, in that regard. Um, but I'm glad she feels like she's better and she's gonna win. Like, that's just gonna make for a good fight. But I know I'm better, and every area of the ring, I have more experience, and um, I'm just, I'm not, this, this is my fight. This is my fight 100%. So I'm gonna go in there and do everything that we've been working on. And I'm fully confident and tune in because if you know both me and Sandy's style, we do both have a tendency to go forward. Like we're not going to be running in circles around the ring. So um, you're going to get us going forward at some point in this fight and uh, it's going to be exciting for sure. Is this a must win fight for Michaela Mayer at this point in your every, career? Every fight is a must win fight for me. And you know, I, I'm not going to let boxing, this narrative that boxing has come up with that Oh, you, you you caught a loss or two, and you know you're out of here. We want to shun you. Um, why would you want to shun someone like me? I've done nothing but go out and make the biggest and best fights possible for the fan fans. I've never got my ass kicked. I've never been whooped, not even for a single round. Those are the types. I, boxing needs more people like me to keep going out there and keep challenging yourself and putting putting fights on that everyone is excited about seeing. So. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'll hang up the gloves when I decide to hang up the gloves, regardless of any decision or anything. And that's what that's what the fans and that's what boxing should push to continue and, and push for. And that's the type of fighters that we should want in this sport. So um, I'm still in my prime. I'm I'm fighting for the next three four years at least, and uh, gonna do everything I can before I hang up the gloves. That'll be my decision. All right. Any final words regarding this matchup? We still have the weigh-ins tomorrow, of course. But I'm gonna. Anything else that you like um, to just, just tune in. I mean, me and Sandy, we're at the top of our game right now. Women's boxing is at the top of its game right now. Um, this fight, you're gonna have two very highly skilled female boxers, like you said, amateur pedigree, professional experience. Um, it's great for the sport. Once again, the women are doing their thing, putting on the fights that everyone wants to see. So, um, you know, kudos to everyone who helped get this fight done and just don't miss it. Champ, I started with you and I will end with you. I'll give you the final word here. Um, just your final thoughts on the matchup and why everybody should make sure they're either at the theater at Madison Square Garden on Friday night or tuning in on ESPN or Sky Sports. Yeah, exactly what she's just said. It's a great fight, both at the top of our game. And it's definitely gonna be an exciting fight because I, I, I'm coming for war. All right, that it will be. Thank you, ladies, for joining me on this stage. I appreciate it. Sandy Ryan, the champ, Michaela May, and the challenge. We're going to face off for the first time this fight week. We will see you tomorrow live for the weigh-ins right here from the theater at Madison Square Garden at noon Eastern. You won't want to miss it. For Mark Chinook and our entire crew, I'm Christina Foncher. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for this face-off.